Hi there. In this particular video, we'll be talking about European options, but the time frame that will be take uh, will be taking here is two years. All right, we'll not be dealing with one year anymore. We'll be talking about two year European options and how exactly you can calculate the value uh, for those. So I have taken a European option, rather a call option. Uh, all right, with a current stock price as fifty dollars. All right, the exercise price is forty five dollars. Something that we need to you know. Uh, take care yeah, or take into consideration because last time the question that we did had the same exercise price and the stock price. However, here the exercise price is on the lower side. We have the up factor as 1.25, the down factor as 0.8, and the risk free rate as 7%. Alright, this is the risk free rate that we have. Up factor is 1.25, down factor is 0.8. Alright, so up factor is equal to one upon down factor. So you can find out or you can verify the relationship between the two using this formula. Then we have the probability of you know the stock going up that is one plus R F minus D upon U minus D. I've already done the calculations for you. Uh, one point zero seven minus point eight divided by one point two five minus point eight. All right, I have simply put in up these values into this formula. All right, you can pause the video and make sure that you uh, put in these values and figure out the number. The probability of up is point six, and as we know, one is equal to pi U plus pi D. So we already have pi U that is point six. So pi D is very easy to calculate. And the pi value of pi d is 0.4. Alright, so quite simple and quite easy to calculate. Now we need to figure out the value of the call option using a two-period binomial model. So I'll be creating that binomial model in front of you, and we'll figure out the value. So we start with dollar fifty. Alright, the up factor is 1.25, so 50 can increase to 1.2. Uh, we, we can multiply it by 1.25. That is 62.5 dollars. And it can as well as go down to the down factor is 0 0.8, so 0 0.8 into 50, that is 40 dollars. All right. Again, the stock can go up. 62.5 multiplied by 1.25, that is 7.78.13. And it can come down back to 62.5 multiplied by 0 0.8, that would be 50 dollars. Right. This particular tranche would be common for both these because if we multiply 40 by the up factor that is 1.25, we'll get the value of $50 only. All right. And you're multiplying 62.5 with uh, 0.8, you're getting the value of $50. So uh, lastly, we'll, have, uh, we'll need to calculate this value as well. That would be 40 multiplied by 0.8, that is $32. All right. So you, all, you have all the values, you have the values at time period 1. You have the values at, at time period two. Now we are looking out for a European call option that has two years of maturity time period. All right, two years to expiration or two years of maturity time period. Now we need to understand how exactly to calculate the value of the call option. All right, it's pretty simple. Uh, remember, we ha have the exercise price this time at forty-five dollars rather than fifty dollars. Uh, earlier, the stock price and the exercise price was similar, but here we are looking at a at an option with a different exercise price vis-a-vis -vis the stock price. All right. Now we need to see what will be the payoff here. So 78.13 is, uh, you know, the total stock price that we are looking after uh, two years. So 78.13 minus 45, that is 33.13 would be the payoff. All right. Uh, the stock price is $50 here. So the payoff would be 50 minus 45, that is $5 here. All right. The stock price is $32 here. The exercise price is 45. There's no chance that I would be uh, Call, exercising my call option, so the payoff would be zero dollars here. All right, the payoff would be zero dollars here. Now, what I need to do here is bring these two payoffs. You know, take the expected value and bring them bring them back to this time period. And at the very same time, bring, uh, take these two payoffs into consideration and discount them and bring back the value at this point in time. So let's see how we are going to do it. So I'm first trying to figure out uh, the expected value for these two numbers, and at the very same time, bring it back to time period one. So we have the risk-free rate as 7% and the probability of up and down as 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. All right. So doing it for your, uh, that is C plus. So that would be 33.13. Uh, you multiply it by the probability of up 0 0.6 plus uh, five, uh, $5 multiplied by 0 0.4. You divide it by 1.07. All right. So that would be 33.13 multiplied by 0 0.6, 19.878 plus 
5 into 0.4 that is 2 dollars divided by 1.07. So multiply 19.878 divided by 1.07. Value is 20.45. Alright, so this is the value of the call option I have gotten as of this time period. Alright, that is 20.45. Next up, we have this particular value that is uh, at this point in time. So that would be $5 multiplied by 0.6 plus $0 multiplied by 0.4 divided by 1.07. The value you'll get is 5 multiplied by 0.6 divided by 1.07. That would be $2.8. Alright, so you get the value here as $2.8. Now here you have the values of the call option, all right. Now what you need to do is again use these numbers, discount them back and bring them to time period zero after you uh, given the weightage of the probability. So the probabilities we have is again 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. So pretty simple to do it, 20.45 multiplied by 0 0.6 plus 2.8 multiplied by 0 0.4 divided by 1.07. All right, so let's do that. 20.45 multiplied by 0.6 that would be 12.27 plus 2.8 multiplied by 0.4 that would be 1.12 you divided by 1.07 so this turns out to be 12.27 plus 1.12 divided by 1.07 Alright, so this is exactly how you calculate the value of the call option in a two-period binomial model. Alright, I haven't done anything. I have simply calculated the payoffs here. Alright, discounted those pay, uh, payoffs here and again discounted them once more to figure out the value of the final call option at time period zero. So, very simple, nothing uh, really much to do. Uh, not very different from one-period binomial model. Calculate the values, calculate the payoffs here. Alright, discount them back after calculating the expected value to, and bring in uh, back to this point in time, whatever values you have received here, all right, after discounting, you discount them once more after taking into consideration the probabilities as well. All right, you'll figure out the final value of the call option. So this is exactly how you work things out, all right, this is exactly how you calculate. You could have done the exact same thing for the for a put option as well, where you would have seen va uh, value getting created here, not here and here because the exercise price is greater, all right. So that is something that you can do uh, as a part of your homework. Alright, so, but this is how exactly two period binomial model for European options really work out where we are only looking out for one expiration time period and not uh, multiple expirations. Alright, uh, in the next video we will also be talking about binomial models using American options. In that case we will understand how exactly things work out. But what we need to understand as of now is, uh, the idea is simple, uh, take into consideration the probabilities and uh, at the very same time the discount rates and make sure that you are able to figure out the value of the options at time period zero which is nothing but the premium which the long party either the call party or the short party is supposed to pay or is the premium which the short call or the short put is supposed to receive. Thank you.